You're watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Hello and welcome to All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral, with me, Steve Sidwell, and of course, Joe Cole. Uh, today we've got a special show because the Cheltenham buzz is a building and we have the perfect guest to straddle the worlds of both football and horse racing. Joining us today is a striker that scored 235 goals in the career um, playing for the likes of Portsmouth, Coventry and Newcastle after retiring and becoming a horse trainer with over 200 wins spanning over 25 years. It's a special show. We needed a special guest. So we've got the mighty Mickey Quinn. Quinny, welcome to go. the show. Good to see you. Mickey. How are you? Okay, you all right? Yeah, yeah, fit and fighting. Good, uh, a good trip down from Newmarket, I believe you come. Yeah, Newmarket suffered great till you get off the M11 and then it's a nightmare coming into yeah. London. Yeah, uh, I remember from the radio days driving in, oh, the, 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 do four mile in about three hours. <laughs> so uh, I'm here in one piece anyway. Good. Right. Well, it's obviously it's a Cheltenham special today. We're going to come on to the racing in a bit, but first of all, let's go back to the the playing days. Uh, started a derby. Uh, moved to Wigan. Hated St Derby, by the way. I know, yeah. Yeah, didn't start... Didn't, well, look, it started the a Derby. The old baseball ground. Four, yeah. Four, yeah. yeah. It started a yeah. Derby, didn't go too well, so you moved back home, didn't you? And you had spells at Wigan, Stockport, Oldham, scoring nearly 100 goals as well for them three yeah, clubs. Yeah, um, likes of Wigan, it was home from home because yeah. uh, I decided by mutual consent to leave Derby. Couldn't yeah. settle down there from a big family. Um, what was that mean? Not in size, I mean, numerically. Was you, was, you, was you an apprentice there at the time, 16, 17? Yeah, 16, 17, right. and um, just couldn't settle. Yeah. So uh, went back home, my dad gave me a good hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Turn us back on. You're turning your back on apprenticeship. I said, well, I, you know, wasn't enjoying yeah. it. So aside from Wigan, we had about 10 scousers in the squad there. And I've got to tell you a story. At the time, um, they wanted to go from the fourth division right to through the leagues, mm. Little Wigan. So they had a board of directors, Ken Bates. Ken Bates? So Bobby wow. Charlton. And um, we had Freddie Pye, who was ex-Stockport County. So they put yeah. a few quid in. And they got Laddie Lloyd, uh, who just finished playing as a player, sort of manager, and brought him in to get the team right the way through the divisions. It never quite worked out like yeah. that. But uh, yeah, I was knocking in goals. Um, new contract, 17, 18, 250 quid a week. Oh, was made up. Days. Yeah, made up. And then I got a call from Freddie who said, um, we were on the verge of promotion. Stockport County is old club. We're going to go out the Football League. Mm. And made me go to Stockport. I <laughs> didn't want to go. <laughs> yeah, didn't want to go. And he said, get down there, score some goals. Yeah. And, um, and keep them did. in the division. Yeah. So I had no choice. I had to go down there. But I got 39 goals, 63 appearances. And first of... My three golden boots. Um, was you was you goals was goal scoring just always natural? Was you always a, a striker? No, I, I played in midfield for the school, yeah. like attacking midfielder. Mm. Yeah, and then the goal scoring. I played uh, Sunday league football, my junior team, striker. I yeah. scored on like, you know, you win fifty and they'll score ten and that. Yeah, and yeah. then it was just a progression um, from the school to to striker, yeah. um, for apprentice and. I'm a professional, yeah. but I was just so single-minded. Yeah. I mean, I used to joke, I'd knock my granny over to score a goal, and I, and I would, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> whether it's in training or whether it was, yeah. it was, yeah. uh, I just lived on goals. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't sleep in the summer, all summer, if I didn't get 20 league goals. Oh, so. Well, I mean, proofs in the pudding there. I mean, the three clubs you mentioned there, Wigan, Stockport, Oldham, nearly, nearly 100 goals. And then you get your move to uh, Portsmouth, where you played the most games in your career at a, a single club yeah. and scoring goals as well. Did you feel like when you got that move to Portsmouth that that straight away you settled there? Like you said there, you, you settled... I was uh, ready, yeah. yeah. You're right. I was ready because I played in the Northwest with them clubs yeah. and all them under Joe Royal and it was all about survival, staying in yeah. the leagues. Portsmouth a bit different. Alan Ball was manager and he said, look, we need to score goals to get us out this division. Yeah. I mean, I think for three seasons they were the most consistent team in any league. Mm. They missed out on a, they were in the top two to the last week of each yeah. season, missed out by a point, missed out on goal difference. And then the third season, I was there, I yeah. think I got 28 goals. We got promoted. Yeah. Played up front with Paul Madden, remember Madden? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, I loved all Ex that. England player, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Got, you know, he was get, getting on a bit from Arsenal and that, but he'd hold the ball up yeah. and just give me a license to get in the box. What, was, goals. Um, what was Alan Ball like? I met Alan Ball once, World Cup winner, like mm. for the younger, it was 1966. I met him once at a do, 
Oh, what a lovely man. Uh, what was he like to work for? So passionate. Yeah. Um, I mean, he was great in training. It's still, uh, he was crossing and shooting and he, he, he'd cross one over. To, I'd knock one in. Joe Royal, dirtiest season I'd make him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and for England and all that. And he's so passionate and so enthusiastic. Mm. Sometimes over the top, you know, yeah. that it would boil over a bit. Yeah. But he put a team, um, your nickname was the Gremlins, because yeah. we had every vice under the sun in that team. <laughs> I mean, he's probably a bit young to remember, but we had uh, a midfield player called Mickey Kennedy. Mm. And my God, if you said mark him, you know, um, he, he was a good player, but... Yeah. Bawley, you know, Mark yeah, Glenn yeah. Oddle, you know, when yeah, we were in the yeah, first yeah, division. Yeah, yeah. And he'd follow him to the toilet and, and everything. And you wouldn't give him a kick. Yeah. We had um, Big Noel Blake. Yeah, at the Noel back. Blake. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. Billy Gilbert. Vince Allaire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right wing. Kevin O'Callaghan, left wing. Yeah. Me Matters. Um, Kev was Dillon. Kevin Dillon yeah. in midfield. Yeah, yeah, he yeah pulling the strings. Reading. I'll he, said never he, got sent off, he said he got sent off 12 times in his career. Yeah. Would that be right? Yeah, probably all of Portsmouth as well. <laughs> <Was it? laughs> I'm telling you. And, um, but I'll never forgive him the promotion season. He got 14 penalties in one season. Yeah. Vince and wow. Callie used to get penalties all the yeah. time. And I, I used to take the odd penalty and yeah. it stopped me getting over 30 goals <laughs> with him taking the penalties. <laughs> when you was at Portsmouth, you obviously met Mick Shannon that you... Yeah, Mick was coming to, become, to the end of the you know, career. A bit of a racing mentor, yeah. I suppose, for you there. Did you feel like at the time, I mean, along the lines of football and racing, that that was the start of a, a friendship? No, or was, did that come later in? I was into racing anyway, um, on the punting front. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, going back to my Liverpool days as a kid, I was lucky enough to grow up um, 70s when Red Rum was winning. So my right, dad took yeah. me to Grand National, yeah. I had the bug. Yeah. I remember sitting down watching the old ITV7 with him on the telly yeah. and um, picking horses and he'd had a bet and mine were beating his so he barred me from watching that on the telly. <laughs> so on the punting front it was that and then yeah. Mick, uh, I made my debut against Palace, Sellers Park. Mick was in the team that day and he was coming to the end of his career going into the race and mm. he said, would you, when I pack in, would you get a horse with me? So I owned an half share in a horse called Lanson, which was his first two-year-old winner yeah so and then wow. that was the bug then what? started owning around yeah. about 87 yeah. owning wow. horses I remember speaking to Mark, obviously Michael Owens big horse man and when we was with England he like he constantly had the racing post mm. tr to train him bang racing post yeah. and he'd be doing his thing and I remember speaking to him and he, he said he get he got as much as a buzz out of a, one of his horses winning as he, as he did scoring a goal do you agree with that or uh, I, I think well he, he was owning horses Michael yeah. I mean he it didn't get up in the morning and start shoveling no. horse shite. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd done the lot, drove the lorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's more fulfilling for me in that sense. Yeah. Training a winner. Yeah. Because of all the factors of running a business and yeah. Yeah. mucking out and, you know, yeah, real yeah, hands on. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And beating other, your horses, beating yeah. other trainers. Now, yeah. I, lo I loved all that. Did you feel like, did you feel like when you were doing that, uh, you feel like like the lower league team going. Like, say you're going against one of definitely, the big hitters. Definitely. If you went and if your horse went and yeah. done one of them, it was like going to like Anfield or Old Trafford and beating one of the big exactly, guys. Yeah. exactly. And uh, you know they, they have an embarrassment of riches, mm. three hundred and yeah. four hundred horses. Some of these yeah. big trainers, you have twenty, and in yeah. that twenty each season, yeah. you've got to take them on and try and beat oh, yeah. them, and that gave you more satisfaction when you did beat them. Yeah. You know, uh, you, you mentioned there about your debut at, at Portsmouth. Um, am I right in saying? That there was a bit of an altercation with John Fashion, you with, oh, yeah, in yeah. terms of a spell that happened uh, two games in four days, and yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I think it was my home debut, we played um, Fashion's playing for Millwall, yeah. And I scored on my home debut 2 1. They had a corner last minute of the game, <coughs> so Kevin Dillon spoke to all oh, my teammates, he would be, he involved. was Mark, Mark and Fash. <laughs> so the corner came over, and Fash went bang, oh my god. He, uh, anyway, put him on the deck. He didn't get up at the count of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Carried off to hospital. I think he had a wow. broken jaw, nose, the lot. Yeah. And he, anyway, um, in them days, that was on Tuesday night, uh, Fash signed for Wimbledon on a Thursday. Yeah. Registration went through. Who have we got at Jura uh, Fratton Park? I was going to say Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I felt like Jurassic Nons Park. None's changed since At Fratton Park on the Saturday... Wimbledon at home. Oh, wow. So for 48 hours, and we had an Andy team, the lads, <laughs> the lads were filing the studs, chalking their elbows. <laughs> He's going to get it. Yeah. And I never forget, 10 seconds past three o'clock kickoff, Mickey Kennedy, two-footed tackle fash around the neck. <laughs> Straight away. Oh, 
ruthless. Wow. But fair to Fash yeah. in his heart, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he just dusted himself off, got on with the game. Well, you play, both played Fratton Park, so you come off the pitch, yeah. you go down the stairs yeah. through the tunnel. Mm. Ball draw, I think it was nil nil or one one, something like that. And as we're coming off the pitch, Fash is in front of me. And Billy Gilby, teammates of mine, is in front of Fash. So as we're coming off the pitch, I see Billy go down. And I thought, hey, the Fash is giving me a dig. So I jumped on Fash's back, <laughs> give him a lift up. <laughs> 22 man brawl in the tunnel. And that's tight park. as well. And in the tunnel, yeah, Ooh, at Fratton Park. Yeah. So as we get back uh, into the changes, there's the gaffer, Ball, he's sitting on the treatment table, tweet. Black hat yeah. pulled down, <laughs> his legs dangling. <laughs> you st- I can't do the voice, but who the F and L started that, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, I thought, <laughs> I had to say, Gaffer, it was me. I said, as we're coming off the pitch, Fash it, Billy. I'm sticking yeah. up for my teammates. I had fashion all yeah. picked off. Yeah. Billy Gilbert said, What do you mean? I slipped on the stairs coming <laughs> off the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Billy slipped on the stairs coming off the pub. I got fined two weeks' wages, and it was in the paper the next day. Pompey crimes. Wow. <laughs> Police involved in everything. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's two really two off. big yeah. outfits going out. I mean, that yeah. tunnel there. You could yeah, yeah, do well yeah, with yeah. twenty-two people in that. Well, uh, I've seen fast since, like, um, yeah. and we laughed about it. But uh, that's okay. proper. I mean, I'm, I do, like we sort of transverse both eras but football now when you think about some of the tackles that go in it's chalk and cheese ain't it yeah from it, where your day even our day it's I like, mean we had cameras and, and yeah. playing but yeah. you could get away with it a little bit more couldn't yeah. you and uh, yeah. just some ruthless but yeah. and there's lots of grudges in that yeah. days you know yeah. you wait for them to come back I mean especially Pompey for some reason <laughs> we had loads of rows in Millwall and uh, Southampton as well yeah. but um, yeah, yeah look good fun as well yeah. it, 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 it kept to that edge like even just speaking today, you can see the buzz with you just mm. speaking about Portsmouth. But so then, the transfer comes with Newcastle, and you're in a bit of a tug of war of of, of a transfer well, to Newcastle or stay at Portsmouth. Yeah, the thing with Portsmouth, um, everything had changed. Ball, he got the sack. John Gregory came in. Yeah. And Jim Gregory, do you remember the old Queen, Queen's Park yeah, Rangers chairman? Yes. Yeah. But he was skint, so I, I was club captain by then. And they offered me like five pounds a week, new contract. <laughs> I yeah. was coming towards the end of my contract because they wanted to sell me, but didn't wow. want to say to the fans, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. we want them out yeah. to get some dough. So Jim Smith rang me up, Newcastle. So Jim said, We need a centre forward. Okay. Uh, how much you got to spend, Jim? He said, 350 grand. I said, I'm going to go for more than that. I've yeah. been yeah. needing goal scorer. Yeah. Two golden boots under me arm so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I said, and these, these want 1.5 million. Yeah. Ports which, before one, what did he 1.5 million? What year wow. was it? It's this? about 50 million quid. <laughs> <days, yo. laughs> <laughs> so, old money. Um, so, what happens is, Jim said, okay, we put a bid in. So, he put a bid in of 100 grand. <laughs> wow. And they said, we want 1.5 million. Goes to tribunal. Yeah. Come out to tribunal. Uh, made me mad, I want to go to Newcastle. 700 grand. Okay. Six, 680 or 690 mm. grand. Um, of which, Newcastle got which right. Jim Smith yeah. gave me his phone and said, you ring the chairman, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the chairman. <laughs> McKeegan was it? I said, Mr. Chairman, he said, yeah, you know, I didn't bonnie lad. He was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, how much you sign you for? I said, nearly 700 grand, Mr. Chairman. He said, you better be bloody good. <laughs> <laughs> In that tone of voice as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I knew it was a massive club. They'd just been relegated, so they yeah, were in the championship yeah, yeah. division yeah. two then. But when I went up there, the club was in chaos. Uh, yeah. They had a group of supporters called Supporters for Change. They wanted the directors out. They were uh, the fans were burning shirts on the pitch the season before yeah. when they were relegated. Wow. Not much changed, has it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should this work a couple, we, a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah well. There's always no. been in some sort of turmoil. Was, um, was, was Gaza there at that time already gone to? No, Gaza had gone, but. Gazza used to come up and watch us yeah. midweek and we used to have a few yeah. nights out, um, oh, wow. which are legendary, really. Yeah. But Glenn Rhoda there? No, Glenn wasn't. Um, no, it was, it, the club was pretty much in transition then. Was it? Kevin Dillon was there from yeah, Portsmouth. Yeah. He uh, instrumental in me going up there. Uh, and I played up front with Mark McGee. Ah, but I got to tell his old story. Old Millwall manager, Mark McGee. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, got to tell his story about when I spoke to Jim Smith. He said, what shirt do you want to wear? I said, it's only one shirt you wear up here, Gaffer. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. Oh, wow. Number nine. Yeah. You know, uh, Jackie Milburn, Hughie Gallagher, yeah. legends, mm. and um, Malcolm McDonald. 
And he said, well, just one thing. I said, what's that? He said, no one wants to wear it. He said, why? He said, no striker has scored 20 league goals for 25 years since Malcolm McDonald. Wow. I said, no, nah, I'll wear it, no problem. Yeah. So, um, first game, um, we played Leeds, and Leeds had spent eight, nine million quid on players, which again was a lot of money yeah, yeah, for a yeah, championship yeah, yeah. team. Yeah. Gordon Strachan, young David yeah, Batty, yeah. <clears throat> good team, that Gary McAllister. Good team. Good team. And um, anyway, we were 2 1 down. I got a penalty. The Gallagher end, you know, the cop end there, Newcastle. Yeah. yeah. Number nine on the door. Come on then. Pass yeah. Mervyn Day. And it yeah. scored on me on my debut. Oh, and nice. then nice. the relief was gone, you know. Yeah. And the belief come. Mm. And then got another three, second half. Yeah. yeah. Got four uh, on my Newcastle United debut with the number nine on. In that season, I got 39 goals. Wow. With the That's number nine phenomenal. on. And That's a, phenomenal. A third yeah. in the Golden Boots. Um, Third? Yeah. Who got uh, more than that? I don't know, but these are, these are <laughs> leading, leading league scorer. Ah, yeah. Oh, right. So I okay. got one Stockport in the league. You know, you yeah, win the Adidas yeah, yeah, Golden yeah, Boots yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. Portsmouth when we yeah. got promoted and then Newcastle. So four on your debut, home debut. Yeah. What was the night out like after that? Oh, <laughs> oh it was lovely. Can you swear it? on this? <laughs> yeah. Say what you want. So, I had my dad up, my uncles. Yeah. So I was staying in the Holiday Inn at the time. So anyway... Didn't buy a drink that night, you know. Yeah. Go back to the hotel and the bar's two floors up from the reception. So two o'clock in the morning, I'm, I'm full of people at the bar. So I was dying for a week. So uh, there's three lifts and two of them weren't working because it was past midnight. There was only one, so I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. Oh, busting, busting. And then someone conveniently put a pot plant there. So <laughs> I thought, I've got to have a wig, got to have a wig, got to wet myself. So I was going like that. The hotel manager came over, six foot four, ex copper, Geordie, and he went, Mickey man, you score another four next week, you can have a shit in that. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere else, locked up. Anywhere else, Newcastle, yeah, go on. <laughs> and that's the way it was. You know, I just hand in glove uh, with the club, yeah. the fans, yeah. everything. and. Still to this day, you treat us as though you're still playing yeah. and you go up there. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. love you, you know. Yeah. So, so then we go on again there, the, the, the passion that you speak about Newcastle, then the move now to Coventry. Was that... Well, I broke my heart really leaving yeah. Newcastle. Was, I mean, that was it? Was it I had a, no choice. Uh, what was the reason? Kevin it, Keegan came yeah. as manager and I was injured. He never really seen the best of me and just when I was getting fully fit, yeah. um, I was like playing in League Cup games Scoring goals, yeah. next game dropped. Getting in through an injury, I yeah. scored a winning goal in that game. Next game dropped, and he did it three or four times. And I thought he's taking the mick, you know. So literally, and uh, so I went to Coventry. Yeah, I had no choice. I was thirty-one by then, something like that. So you, I mean, you hit the ground running. It says you got seventeen goals in twenty-six games, and then the trip to Highbury. Well, every time I seen that ball. I'd seen Keegan's face on it, I thought, get in there. Because <laughs> he, he, you know, I wanted to prove him wrong. Prove wrong. Uh, got back to the big league again, this new Premier League. Yeah. Uh, and I, I still, I think I still got um, some Premier League records from my debut. I scored yeah. my first six Premier League games. Hmm. Aguero got to five and Costa got to yeah. five. Um, and then quickest player to 10 Premier League goals wow. from his debut. Yeah. And again, same two players. Aguero got to nine and Costa got to nine. That's some company, isn't it? See if you can get them on Gold the podcast screen. next yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> They're a bit expensive, Mick. I mean, we've got, we've got to talk about the the, the, the trip to Highbury because um, mm. back then it was a special place to go. You yeah. know, it was the Arsenal. It was, you know, as you said, the, the, um, the stadium, the North Bank was going up there and, and, and bits and bobs. And you get a hat-trick. That's, I mean, that, and, that, that sticks in my mind. Yeah. My yeah. When, when we, we booked you on, I, you know, like all players, you have a bit, like, I remember the hat-trick. Well, we, no... Strikers um, in the league had scored a hat trick at Highbury for 75 years prior to that, mm. and then I got it, and no one did it since because they knocked the ground down. But again, a funny story going into that two weeks prior to the kickoff, big kickoff, it was the new Carling Premier League. Yeah, yeah. So we knew we got Arsenal, uh, Sky were involved, <clears throat> yeah. home of the goal celebration. So we, I took the lads on a bonding session <laughs> to some. <laughs> Country club outside of Coventry. Anyway, this 80s, 80s disco or something. Um, this song come on called The Funky Chicken. So we were all that drunk on the night. We said, whoever scores a, a hybrid mm. 
first game, we'll do the funky chicken. So, <laughs> so we're playing up front with Peter Unlove and Roy Wegg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And little Nuddy, first 20 minutes, goes through. Ad- Tony Adams brings him down, the clock ended, we got a penalty. Yeah. So scored the penalty. So it starts like doing the old funky chicken <laughs> each goal. I remember so it, yeah. They must have thought it got, I think it got voted the worst goal celebration <laughs> <laughs> that season. I didn't give a monkey though. Second half, um, Roy went down the right wing. I was sort of tracking him and he back heeled it, edge, edge of the box. And a great finish, mm. side footed. Yeah. But le- left foot, but guided it right into the yeah, top right hand yeah. corner. Lovely you know, yeah. um, and then the next one, I just cut in inside and just hit it as hard as I couldn't, see him and got a hand to it and went in the top yeah. corner again. But I remember Wrighty coming up and said, great finishes and that. I, I said, if you've got a couple of hours, I'll talk you all through my goals. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like that, right? No, I loved it. He loved it. <laughs> to be fair, Wrighty, I remember asking me for um, advice on a new contract at Palace, you know, yeah. the PFA wow. dues and stuff like yeah. that, because yeah. obviously a bit older than him and... Uh, he didn't do too bad, did he? Well, there was a, there was a big hype around righty at that time, wasn't there? As yeah, well, so yeah. you come in and, nah, a top player. and, and bang an electric. And um, I remember after a little Irish kid, John Sheridan. Yeah, he's only eighteen in yeah. Dublin. He was on the bench, and right, he had a hit single out that day called "Do the Right Thing." Yeah. So um, Shez wrote on Quinny did the right thing and put it under their <laughs> dressing room door <laughs> right after the game. <laughs> And in fact, George Graham went ballistic. <laughs> I think he dragged Merce off at half time as well. Did he? He, he, he thought Merce had been out the night before. <laughs> so, so uh, that, that <laughs> I year. Merce telling me. That year, you went to Coventry. Yeah. You had a bet on yourself to score 30 goals Yeah. that season. Yeah. I but, mean, that just shows the confidence that you've got in yourself as a. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'd flirted with the big league once before yeah. with Pompey, but we got relegated yeah. the same. The chairman sold all the players, so we got relegated the same season, you know, after we got promoted. What was the, the, the big difference there when the, the Premier League was just started out compared to the old first division? Was there, obviously, there was, um, we remember there was a big hype around it, but playing in it, did it feel like, wow, this is. This yeah, is the big, start of something big. Really, That's what it, it felt like. Um, at the time, I think we had 75% British players, yeah. 25% foreign players. But that would have included Irish and Scottish or not? No, no. British, yeah. Yeah, so you put that the, still put the spin on it now, it's yeah. completely the other way. Mm. 75% foreign players, yeah. 25% British players. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the start of something big and then the money sort of... Ninth, late 90s was ploughed in there. Yeah. So, yeah. And the, the lads... the pros were getting the benefit of it then yeah. you know, sadly I just missed out <laughs> Man, Man United dominated the Premier League early years and then f- and throughout uh, would, it, would it be fair to say Gary Pallister would think you're a bit of a wind up well it, funny enough the driver on the way down said, he, he, he used to have a, a row with all the time I said Gary Pallister for some reason and not my fault Yeah. so every time we come out on the pitch this goes back to Newcastle because yeah. he was at Middlesbrough wow right so the derbies then so yeah. come on the pitch I mean, you're going to behave yourself today or what Shut up, you little <laughs> Straight away. So, next minute, uh, uh, I said, just get on with the game and just let's, you know, yeah. next minute, wash, yellow card, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then I thought, oh, well, okay, the gloves are off. I'll have to give yeah. him some stick, give him an elbow. And, all. Yeah. and it just carried on. And every time we come out on the pitch, you're going to get get on with the game today. Or what? <laughs> For some reason, it didn't like me very much. And that went to uh, Manchester United when it was at Coventry yeah. in the Premier League. Uh, I got sent off once against... Um, Manchester United, but not with Gary um, Schmeichel. Uh, little Peter Unlove again got brought down, and yeah. uh, he come goose stepping out to uh, Schmeichel, and I get back in the goal, and he went down <laughs> holding his um, face. Really? Uh, and I was, a, would you believe, the first player to get a red card rescinded on the Monday? Really? Wow. I said, but it doesn't take away the embarrassment. Yeah, yeah. Of uh, twenty-eight thousand United. Uh, fans, mm. when you trudge your nose, thinking yeah. oh, you've had scouts. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so for some reason, I don't know why, but it, what I never rekindled the fire. No. It just didn't like me. Was it? Was there? Was there anyone that that wound you up at all that you would look forward to? Or, or not, not, I mean, you said they're about Pally, but was there anyone that you look forward to playing against, or you think, or or vice, or the opposite opposite side? Sorry, coming up against someone going, oh, he's going to give me a bit of stick today. It's good. It's not nice. really. No, I wasn't in fear of anyone. Or, or we had hard games, and most of them. But the hardest mentally yeah. played against was the old Liverpool team yeah. playing for mm. oh, wow. my God, cool. uh, Alan Hansen, Lawrenson. Yeah. I mean, before I thought 
about closing them down. They were yeah. three passes ahead of you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you could never get near no. them. Honest, yeah. they, the, the football and brains they had. Yeah, they were brilliant. And so I had to try and mix it up, you know, because yeah. you couldn't get near them by upsetting them or was that the best? The was that, was that the set best pieces team? and stuff? Was that the best yeah, team you yeah, played against? Yeah, that yeah. was like. They you talked to a lot of people of that era. They Barnsley, say that team was um, just unreal. Who else were playing at, at the time? Um, Beardsley. Mm. Some team. Yeah. Some team. Yeah. Yeah. Frightening. Well, you retire in February '96 after a spell in Greece. Uh, given your love for race racing, you met uh, met Mick Shannon again. Yeah. Um, did you? Did it help? He mentored me, Mick. Did it? Did it help with the transition? finishing football knowing that you was going to go into or did you not know that you was going to go into no it was something that I was planning for a couple of years because obviously Mick went into the training yeah. I was owning horses I had syndicates and all that yeah. so and I I put everything into the into the football mm. I'd give everything not didn't leave anything no. out and it was just something I was looking forward to then I didn't really have any aspirations to be a manager although I did mm. when I came back from Greece went for the Burnley job um Playing manager there didn't get it, so mm. I thought, well, I'll move on because you needed to get that four, five years experience under your belt before yeah. the jockey club give you a license, right? And prove to them you can run a business, so on and so on. So I had to make a quick decision, and that was it, really, to, yeah. to get involved straight away. Yeah. And Mick took me under his wing and uh, mentored me. Why do you think there's such an overlap with with footballers and racing? I know it was a more of a culture thing. Back yeah. obviously when you was playing, but we see it now. Likes of uh, Michael Owen's got a stable. Glenn Johnson is doing really well. Uh, Griezmann, I think, is, is is growing a yard as well. So, why do you think it is footballers and horse racing goes hand in hand? the culture where in the dressing room, as you know, you had the some in them days, you had the drinkers, mm, yeah, you had the lads who played golf, <clears throat> the racing lads who go racing together, mm. and, and it was just to me, it was meeting different people on the social circle you know it was getting away mm. from the football for an entertaining day out yeah the excitement of you know thoroughbreds yeah. yeah sprinting 40 miles an hour the excitement of winning a few quid you know having a great day social day coming away with a few quid from the racing and um, mm. that was what it was all about to me it was an out away from the football from the norm yeah uh, what will you and won't you miss about training horses um not mucking up, I suppose. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is like Groundhog Day every day because you yeah. go in, feed the horses five o'clock in the morning, then you'd muck them out, then you'd do the exercise, then you'd have three, four hours in the afternoon if you weren't racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're in the evening stables, you're grooming them, so on and so on. You know, for 25 years mm. doing that, yeah. like you'd institutionalised in, yeah. in a bit. I'll miss the interaction with the horses, beautiful animals. Oh, yeah. um, they are, and... Uh, they're calming, you get they? to know, in yeah, random. and they get to you get to know every little vice that they have, and and they're, they're like your kids, yeah. you know. Some some of them naughty, some of them are great, you know what I mean. And uh, and managing them and getting them to that, you know where you've got them, mm. and to pick that race and for it to fall into place and win. It, it, yeah, I miss all that, yeah. but I won't miss getting up five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. No, um, but look. I, I've stepped away from it. I used to say I won't get back in it. I don't yeah. know. I mean, um, I, there's the new racing league starting. It started last year and it's kicking in again um, for s f six Thursdays in August yeah. onwards. I'm, I've been captain of the North team and that. So nice to get back in, bit of interaction and yeah. jockeys and... Is that, is that the plan for the future? You, 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 I mean, a 25 I years think it's a long time. You, you come out yeah. and you thinking, oh, I want to get back in. It's, again, I give everything to the football and I'm, I'm not like one of them boxers that, oh, yeah, I've got to play football all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hardly ever kicked the ball since I retired because I knew I'd put everything into that. Yeah. And then with the race and I put everything into that, I'm thinking, you know, should I go back or, or what? Or I, I don't know. All of a sudden, for the first time in my life, because you always had a game to look forward to with yeah. the football, a race to look forward with mm -hmm. the uh, horses, yeah, you know, yeah. planning ahead, planning ahead, and it's all mapped out. And all of a sudden, there's nothing mapped out for me at the moment. Mm -hmm. Starts to get in in the media again and stuff yeah. like that, and uh, do a bit of after dinner speaking, and 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 that that's nice going around the country, um, yeah. sharing the stories, yeah. which I'm sharing with you yeah. today. I thought I've been fascinated. Is there is there some similarities in football and racing? So when you're a footballer, and we've all been there, you're in that purple patch as a striker. You're scoring goals, and you know you're going to go into games and score. 
Do you get that in racing as well in terms of the horses are there yeah, they're at the top are you thinking you're going to go into most races going we've got a great chance today a great chance yeah, yeah. It, it's, it happens very rarely over yeah. the year you know you, you'll have probably four or five races where you know that's the, exactly the race for that horse mm. the ground the draw yeah. the jockey the trip but then it's the only sport where it's out of your hands because you can do something in football yeah. you can make a goal score a goal you know save a goal but in racing it's out of your hands once the jockey gets on. Yeah. It's down to human error then. Yeah. So, but when it all pieces together, yeah. Yeah. It's it's fantastic. But, but like I say, four or five times a year that would happen where yeah. everything fell into place. Right. And have a few good on. I mean, I mean, I, I remember my horse, and um, what was his name? Popper Nan. It was like if my Popper because I used to work, it was my granddad who got me into horse racing, yeah. and so I, I called it Pop. I called it Popper Nan. I didn't want to leave my Nan out, so yeah. I put Popper Nan anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. So anyway, I loved it, but he, he was the most. Simon said he was the most relaxed horse ever. Like yeah. I went to see him before the race, and you know, like they sometimes they can get a bit. The horses can get a bit um, unsettled like in the in the in the back of the van or whatever it is, yeah. and then they get there and they'll. He would just go to sleep. He was just like yeah. he was the Eden Hazard of horses. <laughs> I go and see him. I go and see him before a race. We're like oh, an hour before a yeah. kickoff yeah. or whatever. It'd be a kip on him like. <laughs> I'm like, oh, is, he, is he all right? I'm going they, something. Is they're he all the right best or what? to our job because yeah. they conserved that energy yeah. for the race. He was so yeah. where you know you get a hyper horse, mm. um, you know they, they might sweat uh, before yeah. the race and the, the the energy they're losing energy. But yeah, yeah I mean it, temperament like that um, is fantastic talented. in a race yeah. horse. But like on a day to day basis, you, you know it's like Russian roulette when you're yeah. working with them. Yeah, uh, being bitten. I've, I've had, you know, numerous horses stand on your toe. Bitten? Horses bite, do they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the hyper. I mean, especially when... You're not um... seeing horses' teeth. <laughs> yeah, they've got no, some railings. I mean, it's, it's not... <laughs> <laughs> it's not like... They kick you. It's not like Jaws the movies. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying when you... You know, some of them irritated when you're brushing them, and they have a little pop on you. And you don't know it's coming no, sometimes. No, it's sharp. Oh. It's sharp, the hyper. The, the, oh. um, I mean, you're feeding them 15 pounds in weight yeah. of food a day, wow. you know, for the condition yeah. and uh, they're athletes. And of yeah. course, you come into their space, some of yeah. them get out, you know, uh, yeah. don't want you in, present to kick yeah. you, you know. Mm. It's just their way. They're, like I say, every horse is, and you've got a, a nice horse like yeah. that, they're like pets. Uh, yeah. But they're not all like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what really happened? So we're going to go back to a moment in your career. We want to know more about it. Uh, we could, we've touched on it a little bit beforehand, but it's the move from Newcastle to Coventry. You said there it broke your heart. When did you find out that the deal was on the table to, to go? About the fourth time I went into Kevin Keegan's office like that on the door. I said, Kevin, I said, that's four times you dropped me. I've been in the team four times. Yeah. Scored the winning goals four times. I don't really come and go on. He said, you're going. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're going. Just been on the phone to Bobby Gould, Coventry manager. Yeah. And within an hour, I was down the M1 uh, to Coventry. Lit never had time to say goodbye to the fans. Never had time to say goodbye to my teammates. And I'd been there three and a quarter years and loved it up there. Uh, did that leave a bit of taste? It did. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So yeah. I, it, it fired me up, really, to yeah. prove him... Kevin yeah. Long, and I know Kevin seen him afterwards, knew him before through yeah. Mick Shannon, Alan Ball. Mm. Yeah, got on well with them, but it's different when he they on Was a working really... basis and he comes your boss. Mm. Yeah. He's my idol as a kid. Yeah, yeah. You know, growing up in Liverpool in the seventies. So, yeah. so was there a reason around it? Did they want you out to get money in, or did they see, earmark someone else to come in and take your place? Uh, Was... A bit of a bit of that. He he'd come in. He struggled to start with. We just about stayed up yeah. previous season, and then he wanted to bring in his own players. And, you know, I had a few words with him about something and he obviously didn't take, like, I didn't yeah. argue with him, but yeah. we were speaking about the team and where it was going and stuff like that. And I think with Kevin's first job, he didn't like confrontation, not mm. aggressive confrontation, yeah. just talk. Oh, and, conversation. Yeah. yeah, he wanted to do everything, you know, make mm. all the decisions, didn't really get, and yet he brought experienced players into the squad eventually who he bounced off and who he yeah, talked yeah, to. Yeah. And look, he went on to build one of the best teams in the Premier League that never won anything, really. Yeah. The entertainers, you know, yeah. um, they were a fantastic team. I really enjoyed watching it. But to me, the way I thought he could have handled it a bit better, the move, yeah. you know, and in the end, I thought, well, it's to this new Premier League, you know, and it's it's a ticket to the big league again. Yeah. 
and, and uh, I was going to take it. And going back to St James Park with Coventry, it must have been nice to to say a, 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 a goodbye there to the fans. You must have got a good reception. Yeah, I always do. Yeah, I mean, when the first one, obviously, uh, I was working for that Sky at the time, so. <laughs> He was singing Who Ate All The Pies. <laughs> we, were in a, <laughs> we were in a porter cabin because you were building yeah. the, the big main stand. Yeah. Um, anyway, you've got to come out the porter cabin to go to the toilet yeah. through the fans. Yeah. So they were Who Ate All The Pies laughing and joking. And they started walking through and they were Who Ate All The Pies. <laughs> <You're being quiet. laughs> I went to the toilet and then I went to the, uh, the thing and I bought 25 pies on the train, <laughs> brought them back <laughs> and handed them out. <laughs> but we had a laugh and I always do, yeah, and it, like I say, it's it's more now when I go back. Yeah, I can't set foot off the tra- train stage, off the train onto the platform, and someone's asking you for a selfie or a yeah, 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 It's yeah. mad. Yeah. He, they're so That's passionate amazing. out there, isn't they? But over thirty yeah. years ago, you know, yeah. uh, when I play for them, but yet they, they never forget you. I think, so. I, I think I think current players, you don't realise the effect you have when you're playing and doing it, and then you go back to a club that you've done well at, and then you get all the you know people. Yeah. It's nice, isn't it? But I yeah, don't think course. players current the current players should, you don't take it in while you're playing. That like Mickey said, thirty years after he's left Newcastle, mm. they still love him. Yeah. He goes back there, and it, it's it's it's. Imp- I think for younger players playing now, they should really recognise yeah. that what they're doing now is affecting affecting the fans. Yeah. If you do a job at a club, they'll love you forever, won't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. So, do you do you still? I mean, you say it very rarely, but what's your relationship now like with Kev Keane? Like you said, you see him out I've, and about. I've all seen time. him a couple. I don't see him all the time, but I've met him since we left him. Mm. Fine. All yeah. fine. Mm. Good. Mm. Um, good. good. Kevin's on the after dinner circuit as well. Yeah. So I'm sure I'll bump into him some, somewhere along the line. Okay. But you don't realise at the time when he becomes your boss. Yeah. A lot of people, even in normal jobs, some mm. don't see yeah. eye to eye with their boss. But yeah, you've got to yeah. get on with it and you've got to work yeah. through it. And in football, when new managers come in, they wanted to bring their own players in. Yeah. And he brought some cracking players in. I think Gavin Peacock came and uh, mm. Ned Kelly, David Kelly. Yeah. So at times I was playing with them. You know, three off front. Lee Clark was in midfield. Yeah. Clark, he's good player, top player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but played against him. Ozzy was manager before Kevin, and I will say for Ozzy, when he come in, um, he introduced the young lads. So you know, you had the United, the classic. Yeah, right. yeah. So he brought in the likes of Lee Clark, Steve Howie, Robbie yeah. Elliott, um, yeah. Steve Watson, yeah. yeah, into that team, and they were ready to play. But they were a little bit naive, you know, yeah, and we were losing yeah. games. And I was about, he was only there three months, Ozzy, mm. and he got the sack, and then they panicked, and then they brought Kevin in after yeah. that. So, yeah. uh, but again, I learned a lot of Ozzy, you know, the training side of it, yeah. passing the move, and the one touch football. He was the best player in the five sides, Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was brilliant. I'm and and uh, Tony Galvin was his assistant. So, played under a lot of decent mm. coaches and managers and probably learned something off everyone. Well, look, let's stay on Newcastle. Let's do some pre- uh, current Premier League chat. Uh, Newcastle didn't get the result yesterday against Chelsea. VAR and, and bits Robbed. of... Yeah, yeah, it was, it was <laughs> terrible. Robbed. There's a lot of spotlight you know, on the club at the moment in mm. terms of Newcastle with the takeover, the yeah. new manager, signings that have come in. You've got to say that the, Eddie Howe and the players, they've... Where it's affected them at the start, but at the moment, they're... They're going well, huh? Yeah, there's, a, there's obviously with the new consortium coming in, which was a breath of fresh air yeah. for the fans, because for 14 years the club had stagnated. There was no ambition at the club under the previous um, Ashley, under the previous ownership. All he wanted to do was stay in the Premier League, get the dough, not interested in cup competitions, yeah, yeah, yeah. no ambition. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You can't go on like that. And yeah. you know, I went up there and did a game, a few executive boxes. And it's like a cloud since Ashley gone. I went into the club, and the results weren't going their way. But you know, Eddie had come and he's experienced. But you could see the smile back on mm, the fans' faces, yeah. actually looking forward to going to a game, yeah, yeah. looking forward to the future, to say, you know, the owners yeah, came yeah, out said yeah. we want to win something in the next five years, which yeah. is unheard of yeah. for the last fourteen. So yeah, it's like a breath of fresh air. The club's vibrant again, and the results have shown that mm. and you know there was a, again a bit, a bit of uh, when there's the January window and mm-hmm. you spend the money and uh, you know they're just yeah. spending it for the sake of it but yeah. signings have worked oh, out well. fantastic oh, we, we, we've been we've been singing Eddie Howe's praises on this podcast yeah. we asked the question when he come in and there was like, again there was a lot of people in football going Eddie Howe mm. like, and I was like no like I, I don't know Eddie personally but I've 
been a kid, uh, watched his career and that. I think he's different class. The way his Bournemouth team played. And for people to criticise him for Bournemouth getting relegated, he went, well, he took Bournemouth down. But by the way, he took them from League Two to the Premier League, yeah. kept them up, played some outstanding football. I think he fell down a little bit. When he got a bit of money to spend at Bournemouth, since we've talked about this, he didn't get the signings quite right, hence the reason they went down. So when he went to Newcastle, oh, that's, I thought it was a brilliant appointment. He yeah. knows the Premier League. He, he's a coach. Like He gets the best mm. out of players, doesn't he? he like, you see yeah. him. And I think he's been outstanding like they, they, I shouted it when they he took the job there's no way they'll go down now yeah. he's so, I think Dan Burns has been unbelievable mm. what a signing yeah. that is and he's a Geordie yeah. as well <clears throat> Super. He, so he's, he, he's straight away he's got that connection with the fans which has been missing going up to do the broadcast over the last few years at Newcastle coming from down there you don't realise how disliked Mike Ashley and his his era was like yeah. they, the fans weren't buying they were refusing to buy their pints in the stadium and mm. they was, uh, wouldn't buy nothing from... It's, it's well, when, unbelievable. I mean, when you think he's, he, he tried to change the name of the ground to the... Yeah. To the yeah. Uh, you know, I mean... Taking Shearer's statue down like that's yeah. just a, a, a PR nightmare, isn't it? Mm. Very disrespectful. I mean, the one thing, because they haven't won anything, yeah. they latch onto is the history yeah. and the fantastic players they've had there, yeah. Yeah. like Alan, you know, and, and yeah. to move a statue and they changed the name... Of the bar as well, yeah. and mad. But it, look, he had to go, and he, yeah. he got his money, so he's happy, and and the fans have got their club back. Well, yeah. you say the fans, and it's an exciting time for fans to be mm. to be at Newcastle now. <clears throat> How far can Eddie take this? I say team. Oh. Far, I mean, we, we, they're talking ambitions for Premier League. You know, is that something that really can be achievable? Yeah. Joe mentioned about Eddie. This is my only doubt. Is that his team with um, Bournemouth, all he had to do was what Ashley wanted yeah, 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 to yeah. do with Newcastle, yeah, yeah, keep yeah. them in. But we know Eddie's ambitious and he'll, it, it's an experience for him to build a mm. team to go out and win things now yeah. and get into Europa League spot or yeah. Champions League spot in the next two or three years. So mm-hmm. I've no doubt in my mind, you know, and what I've seen and how he's revitalised mm. players who I thought with no best in championship player who are on that I verge agree. of championship. I agree. Yeah. Like I agree. Shelby and Ryan Fraser. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, who else? Matt Ritchie. And, yeah. And, and, and Joe Linton. Yeah. yeah. Joe 40 Linton. million quid. I scored more goals than being retired 30 years. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, mm. you know, under Joe, under Eddie, he's, Joe Linton's like one of the best Premier League midfielders. Yeah. Yeah. In current form. Yeah. Unbelievable. I oh, know. Nice. How he's Same done that. And that, so that gives me, more to go on for the future yeah. to think he can build the team and they're only going to get better players yeah. because they've got the dough to, to, to buy some. I, I agree. I agree. I just think, you know, for the one thing from the history and the start of football, the team with the most money or with the money buys the best players mm. and they win trophies. And, and it's right away through from the great Liverpool side. They, they, they bought the best players, didn't they? Manchester United, they bought the best players. Our Chelsea team, we bought the best players. You win things. And I think Newcastle now can compete financially it's, the only question would be was will Eddie be able because it, it's not going to be like that they're not going to stay up from relegation then go Europa League yeah. then go Champions League then win they'll yeah. be some they'll be, and you know in this game you can have six bad weeks and you're out the mm. door mm. and at every match now if, if Eddie keeps Newcastle up all them names that they got linked with in the summer you um just gone past your Contes your um, Allegri's yeah. I don't know who else uh, Enrique all these managers big names are out of jobs now all of a sudden they're going. Well, oh, I quite fancy that now because it's a black cap. Uh, but do you remember Joe when Stevie Bruce left? Yeah. And some of the managers that were being linked, and some of them didn't fancy it exactly because yeah. the yeah. position yes. they were in and fair yeah. play to Eddie, he's yeah. waited for a big club yeah. to come in because he's had other job offers. Yeah. And he'd won one game. Yeah. Had they won a game when he took over? I think it was. Mm. He, they was most he people won had any written game. Him off. Most Probably, pe- yeah. most people had written him off. Mm. He, it was in December, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was, and he, he, he got a tune out of the players even before he got the new players in. And now they've gone up another level. Uh, Premier uh, League manager of the month yeah. uh, in the last month. Uh, well, they're certainly doing well. Uh, let's go to the top end of the table. Top four mm. race. West Ham, Arsenal, Man United all picking up three points. Yeah. How do you see that one shaping Ooh, now? Top Sid's. four. I mean, this is the Arsenal. Arsenal are favourite, aren't they? I mean, with the games in hand. Uh, uh, although they play Liverpool, don't they, coming up? So, not going to win that, well. are they? <laughs> I don't know about Spurs. 
But they've got to be favourites. It's in their hands now. They've got the yeah. game in hand, the fourth, beat Leicester. A lot of credit's got to go to Arteta at oh, the moment. He's done, he's, he's done really he, well. A few people scratching their head about him earlier yeah, in the yeah, season, yeah. weren't they? Um, when he had injuries and mm. he, lost, he went on a run of uh, defeats. But I think he's getting there now. And I like the policy of the younger players. Yeah. I know the uh, my team's Liverpool. And I remember <sighs> when Brendan was there. Mm. Uh, is that they couldn't really buy top class no, players? Didn't have the budget no. to buy top class yeah. players, yeah. so they had to bring in a few younger players and you know wheel and deal in the market and that. Uh, and I think that's where Arsenal are at the moment. So yeah. if they can yeah. stay in that Champions League, yeah. give them you know oh, a massive. base to get m- money. That they, I don't think their business model would have been. They didn't think they could get Champions League football this year. This is an. This is. A, I think they got to December. And they thought this is going better than mm. we thought. Mm. So and probably speed up the process of a couple of years. If they get Champions League football, they'll have a little bit more money to spend, and they'll yeah. go again. I think he's done a great job, Arteta. And uh, Harry still looks like a, a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. He looks unreal. I think he dies as well. I'm, 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 I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there with the missus, and yesterday, and I'm going. I'm, we're looking at it for a good couple of minutes. We're debating. Is that? Is that? It looks too. He can't die because it looks too perfect. He looks like. Looks unreal. He's looking good, eh? Yeah, he's looking he's good. Play. I just want to touch on Liverpool very, very quickly. Massive Liverpool fan. They've got a chance. I think they have. they got I a real chance. Is, I think this is going to turn out to be a gruelling season for both City mm. and Liverpool. Liverpool won the League Cup, still in, you know, FA Cup, yeah. Champions Liverpool? League. Yeah. Oh. Uh, whether, I mean, no one's ever done it, have they? So, whether like, but I'm saying grueling and yeah. they've got to grind out results and yeah. 20 minutes against Brighton, yeah. they were outplayed. Yeah. And yeah. then they got the class, got that goal, Diaz yeah. and that. I think they're going to push City all the way. Whether they do it, I still don't know whether they might run out of gas, but mm. they're going to push them all the way, all the way, right to the mm. wire. Yeah. And the best compliment is Pep is saying he does my head in Klopp and Liverpool because yeah, yeah, they're like yeah. hovering all the yeah. time. Uh, and I judge players and football teams on if I was a punter and I'd go to mm. pay to mm. watch and under Pep Guardiola's teams, under Klopp's teams, I'd go and pay yeah. gladly yeah. to watch yeah. them teams play. You know, I agree, Mick. On the teams. I agree, Sid. I, I think there's two outstanding teams. Mm. I, I can't see either of them winning all of it, but they're going to push each other. I, I, two Champions League winners are going to come from Liverpool, Man City. I've, I've done all the champ- We've done all the Champions Leagues at BT and they're the two best teams by a mile. Liverpool, yeah. Man City. Chelsea just underneath them. Do you reckon yeah. they've got a chance of falling into fourth place? Uh, I, mm, I could, uh, there's I, a lot I, going. There's a lot surrounding a lot the club at the moment. And it, I think Tuchel's doing an amazing job, but yeah. it's got to be affecting the players in some, in yeah. some capacity. Well, I, I think keep winning, though, don't they? Keep winning games. And that's down to Thomas Tuchel, Mick. Honestly, I've, I've been over there. I'm going in there t- um, tomorrow to interview someone for the game. Um, and every time I go down there... When you walk into a football club, we've, we've all played. You know when a manager's got yeah. it. But mm. like, yeah, I walk into some football clubs. And I'm like, oh, this don't feel good mm. or something. But he just like he's brilliant with me. He comes out, he'll have a chat. You know, blah blah blah. He's, he's just open. I thought he's handled this whole process fantastically. But it's unsettling for the players, of course. But I, I don't think they'll fall off it. I think they'll finish third. Yeah. But it's going to be difficult for the Champions League now with all of the distractions. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I think they're just a little bit short. They're a great side. Yeah. Great side. Yeah. Like I said, champions of Europe, but they're just a little bit short of Liverpool and Man City in terms... Because they're what Pep and Jürgen have done is unbelievable. Phenomenal. OK, time for the Coral Super Series game. Uh, I'm going to ask you both uh, questions on the Tottenham v West Ham game, uh, as well as some Cheltenham races uh, questions. Joe, mm-hmm. it was 9 all. Last yep. pod, you're eleven ten now, winning. Oh, all I'd right. So you've yep. got your nose in front. Yep. Are you going to keep the yep. uh, the whip going? All right. So steady away. First of all, Tottenham West Ham. Uh, Joe, first, who will win the match? Tottenham West Ham. It's at White Hart Lane. Oh, this is a tough one because I can't back Tottenham, but <laughs> <laughs> I can't. But I want to win. Do you know what I mean? I know West Ham got so many. I'm gonna go draw. Draw. I'm gonna go draw. I'm going Spurs. I thought he played well against uh, United at Old Trafford. Yeah. Ronaldo was the difference. Okay. And uh, Spurs for me. First goal scorer. Tottenham West Ham. Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Yeah, it's a banker, isn't it? How many corners will there be? You actually got this right last Shut week. Shut up. Can you believe it? How did many he? How many corners will there be? What did I say last week? Eight, did, eight. You said eight. 
Let's go eight. I'm going six. Bit feisty, this one. How yeah. many cards? Oh. How many cards would it be in the game? Five. I'm going three. Okay, right on to Cheltenham. Uh, what are the chances of an English trainer winning the Triumph Hurdle? Joe's got more chance of winning the Triumph Hurdle. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the first four favourites are all trained in Ireland. Right. And I cannot see any English horse. Really? Or Scottish horse or whatever. Get yep. past them um, them four yeah. ahead of the betting in the Triumph Hurdle. So no chance. Wow, yeah. okay. Well, that's massive. Uh, can Honeysuckle win the champion hurdle by more than she won the Irish champion hurdle? Six and a half lengths. Yeah, the Irish champion hurdle is a bit weaker race than, than the yeah. uh, champion hurdle. She's some horse. I mean, Rachel Blackmore, uh, she was in Sportsman of the Year last year. Yes. Rachel Blackmore. yes. Yeah. She gets on with the filly. She's ran 14 times, won 14 races. Yeah. She won the champion hurdle last year. No fans there this year. If she wins Champion Hill, which I think she will, uh, blow the roof off. I don't think it'll be by over six and a half lengths. I think it'll be under. And lastly, the big one, who will win the Gold Cup? Well, I know Joe's been studying this, haven't you, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like a couple in it, so it's a very open Gold Cup this year. Usually you have a champion like in the Champion Hill, one or... Yeah. But uh, I like... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to read it, hold on to say it it's a Dan Skelton horse called Pratikarat Pratikarat is that how you pronounce okay. it I ain't got a scoop something like that uh, and you know cracking each way price the horse has won twice at Cheltenham Ooh. and loves the track and a bit more rain I think he'll run an absolute cracker and he saved it for the race he could have gone other oh, races really? yeah, but he okay. saved it for the goal okay um, I'm going to go with a Plutard which Ooh. in French means a bit late. <laughs> As we've well documented on this pod, my history, my Derek Trotter level of French. So I'm going to back, I'm gonna back the, French, the French horse there. I don't even know, probably not Rachel French. Blackmore rides that, Joe there as well, oh. um, for an Irish trainer, Henry de Bromhead. That was being anti post favourite for most of the year. Right. So it got turned over by Galvin. Yeah. Ahead in a photo finish. Right. But prior to that, won a Haydock and was outstanding. And I was, going, I was tempted to have a bet on it then. Early right. in this season to win the Gold Cup, so if that comes back to its form, got a great yeah. chance. When I sorry, whenever I go Cheltenham, I I, I like me all racing, but I don't study form. But I love me racing, and I just used to back Ruby Walsh. Yeah, yeah. Willie Mullins is trainer. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And he, but what's what's he doing now, Ruby? Ruby's doing TV. He's retired right. now. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I'll never forgive him because uh, <laughs> he cost me uh, well seven grand. Really? Yeah. Um, do you remember the meeting when? Willie Mullins, uh, uh, he had a superb first day. Yeah. And it, we, everyone had had roll-ups and accumulators yeah. and yeah. doubles, trebles, all going on. Annie Power. Annie Power, yeah. What and, year was this? Oh, was, 2016, yeah. was it? Yeah, we were, at Stoke. we were at Stoke. Yeah, Charlie Adam had it big. That, if Annie Power would have won, it would have cost the bookmakers over 50 mm. million mm. quid. Because right. we'd all had the same bet, all yeah. doubles and trebles. Coming down the hill, last. 20 lengths clear, like that, on the bridle. Coming oh. to the last... Bump fell. No. Well, I was on the phone coming down to the last. Oh, my mate, yeah, he's not too easy. <laughs> like, like, the, like the Del Boy cigar up like that. Yeah, and then it fell. And <laughs> Gee, you'll never forgive Ruby. That, for that. Sorry, I remember this, when I had my horse, my, we, had, we had this trainer come. This I can't even remember his name. But I think my horse got an each way happy, but with this fella who's in, and we fed him. Champagne, him. all my mates are on him, and he's like, The last race, lads, I've got one for the last. I'm not going to tell you yet. And we're like, oh, The lads are buzzing, the lads are going to the cash point, they're getting all their readies out. This geezer can't miss. He's going, He's going, This horse doesn't even need a jockey, just point it out the line. It's one, get it. All, the, all my mates have gone bang. A race has gone off, and you're obviously at, you know, last race of the day, everyone's had a few. We're watching it. This horse, I tell you. It was. It might, I don't even think it had four legs. The way it was racing, <laughs> the, and he's like that. And as the realization, he's got no chance. He's coming a bit. Lads, he's off. This geezer. <laughs> I didn't know his name. 
<laughs> Dummy man. Is that two and that's champagne though. Yeah. He's had two, he had a good and afternoon. Fed. He had a great one. Gone he was. <laughs> well, yeah. there you go. That, that was my last. That was my last chance. That was my last time to race. The tips from the experts. Yeah. Uh, remember, a blue tard. <laughs> remember, you can uh, play along at home. Just head over to coral.co.uk. Uh, answer questions correctly to win cash prizes, but please gamble responsibly. Uh, Mickey, it's been an absolute pleasure. Cheers. Thank, Thank you so me. much uh, for coming on. Um, enjoy Cheltenham this week. If I've got, got oh, yeah, one so. eye on it. Yeah, um, yeah, always try and get a few quid in the bank yeah. to uh, to have a good four days. Um, so, yeah, and I'm hopefully going to come out to the other side with a few quid. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> well, look, it has been a Cheltenham special. Uh, remember, you can find us on the Joe YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcast from. Before we go, a quick mention for Coral's latest episode of Against the Odds that features the famous racehorse, Desert Orchid, uh, telling the inside story of how he defied the dog to become one of the greatest and most popular jump uh, racehorses in history. You can catch that on the ITV Hub now. Uh, you have been listening to the All To Play For podcast brought to you by Joe and Coral. We'll see you soon. You've been watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. <laughs>